We're talking about one of the world's most powerful institutions with a total portfolio of almost $400 billion. It's one of the world's largest sources of funding for developing countries and it has a triple A credit rating. We are of course talking about the World Bank. But the question is, what exactly is the World Bank and what does it do? The World Bank was created in 1944 in response to the Second World War. Since so many countries were shattered by the war, the organisation was established to try to help with the reconstruction and development of these countries and to reduce global poverty. The intention was to provide temporary loans to low-income countries which were unable otherwise to get these loans on their own. Since that point in time, the World Bank has now taken on over 13,500 projects with total lending commitments over this time of over a trillion dollars. Now, although the World Bank clearly has the word bank in its name, it's not your typical style of bank. I think this can best be seen if we take a look at its mission, which is to end extreme poverty and to promote shared prosperity. The main focus has therefore shifted from reconstruction after the war to development of countries in areas such as roads, electrical infrastructure and irrigation systems. Now, essentially, the World Bank is an international organisation with 189 member countries. These member countries are referred to as shareholders since they actually hold shares in the organisation. The number of shares that a country owns will depend on the fees that they've paid to the World Bank and those fees will largely depend on the size of the economy. These shares that are owned by the countries translate into voting power. I'm sure you're familiar with the concept of one share counting for one vote, similar to a company, and this is for most of the organisations that make up the World Bank Group, that one share will equal one vote. So this means that the US has the largest voting power with 15.85%. This is then followed by Japan with 6.84%, so that's a big gap, and then China, Germany and the UK and France are quite equal with each other. Now, something that you may have picked up on there is that China is obviously a huge economy, but they only have a relatively small percentage of the votes and shares. One of the big reasons for this is that they were actually one of the big beneficiaries of the lending. They were a borrower rather than a lender. Although that seems to now be changing a bit and that's partly thanks to the US which strongly objected to so much money being lent to China. And you know, what the US says and thinks about the World Bank is going to be very influential. First of all, because they obviously own the most shares and voting power, but also because of something else as well. You see, the board of directors for the bank consists of a president and 25 executive directors. And that president has traditionally always been an American. And this is due to an informal agreement that was made when the organisation was established. So basically, the World Bank and the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, were both created as part of the Bretton Woods Agreement. And following this agreement, an informal agreement was made, which is that the US would choose the head of the World Bank and Europe would choose the head of the IMF. So it sounds kind of fair, right? So that's why the president is usually always going to be American. The World Bank Group consists of five international organisations. When people refer to the World Bank rather than the World Bank Group, they're usually referring to just two of these, which are the IBRD and the IDA. So the IBRD stands for the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. For a poverty-stricken country, this institution offers an invaluable service. You see, these countries would really struggle to take on a traditional loan since it would be practically impossible with interest payments being extremely high. Instead, the World Bank can step in and really help them out with this. The World Bank has one of the strongest AAA ratings with the credit rating agencies, thanks to the fact that their debt instruments are backed up by the capital commitments of the member countries and the fact that they have large financial reserves. This means that they can borrow money from the capital markets relatively cheaply, mainly through sale of bonds, which are known as World Bank bonds, and then channel this money through to developing countries at an extremely low interest rate, making borrowing more affordable for these countries that really need it. And in fact, the rate is usually below the rate that the bank is paying to its bondholders. So to offset this, they will also sometimes lend money at a higher rate to more wealthy countries who will pay a higher rate of interest. 
The second institution that I mentioned, the IDA, is the International Development Association. This is similar to the one that we just discussed, except this agency works with the really poorest countries. Like to be in this group, the country must have an average income per person, otherwise known as per capita income, below $885 per year. Now to put that in perspective, in the US, the per capita income is around $60,000 per year. So you can see there's a huge gap there. Now the countries in this group can receive interest-free loans or grants. And in many cases, the borrower country may not even have to start repayments until 10 years after the loan has been issued. The final three agencies out of the five are less well known, and these include the International Finance Corporation, which promotes growth through financing private sector investments, the Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency, which helps to promote foreign investment by protecting investors from losses through guarantees, and finally, the International Centre for Settlement of Investment Disputes, which deals with disputes between foreign investors and host countries. In 2018, the bank's lending commitments were $47 billion. However, it's not just about lending big amounts of money. The bank also offers advice and expertise in an attempt to tackle a range of issues, including agriculture, education, climate change, conflict, food security, trade, finance. The bank has a twin goal. The first one being to end extreme poverty by the year 2030, and the second one being to boost the shared prosperity of the poorest 40% of the population in all countries. Now, that obviously all sounds great, but actually the World Bank has also got its own controversies and criticisms as well. There have been allegations of corruption in some cases and criticisms of the way they operate, which some people believe causes harmful effects. Some analysis shows that they actually increased poverty in some cases and were detrimental to the environment, public health and diversity, as well as pushing an agenda which in some cases imposes damaging policies. Now, one particular critic who's received a lot of media attention, especially recently, is David Malpass, who President Trump has nominated to be the next head of the World Bank. He's been critical of many aspects, which include the World Bank's huge loans to China, rather than to countries that cannot secure the capital elsewhere, and what he believes to be a lack of accountability in the organization. However, rather than burning the World Bank to the ground or undermining it, as some people have been sensationally suggesting Malpass may do, based on his previous criticisms, I think it's much more likely that he will attempt to reform the World Bank, which may actually be good for the long-term future of this very powerful institution. So guys, that was a brief overview of the World Bank and what it does. I hope you found it useful, and if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on similar videos in the future. Don't forget to check the description box for links to extra content that will boost your economic knowledge, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.